So now that we understand some basic logics like and, or, um, not, uh, let's actually start doing some programming with that. Uh, and on the screen, you can see I got a basic, a basic ladder rung. So, if, and, and if I push it in this button here, you can see that the light turns on. But once I let go, it turns off. Is that really effective in industry? Do I want to employ someone to sit there and hold a button in to make sure something goes? Probably not. And I can't just always use selector switches. I can't, I, I may just want a momentary signal because right now that's a push button. It's a momentary push button that once I push it and let go, it disappears. Well, how do I keep this on is the question. And, and this is, if you've had some type of motor control background, you may think this is in the back of your head, a seal-in circuit. And typically what that would be consist of, I'm gonna get my little drawing pen out, is say I have a relay here, say I have a normal ice cube relay with all my, my bits, and if you know what I mean here, where this is my coil here, so one, and let's just do eight, three, four, five, and six. And let me change a color to something else, maybe color, uh, that one should work. Typically what we'll do is we'll, we'll have a, we will run a wire through here, through your positive, and then we'll run a wire here to your negative DC, and that will actuate the coil of your, you know, so let me just do this, you know, a coil right there, okay? This is a relay, this is a, or a contact, or you would say principle, but this is a relay, hypothetically. Um, format, let me do, yeah, let's do blue, okay, here we go. And then, so that when this, when this switch here, so if I have a push button right here, sorry. If I press it in, power goes to the coil, and then we'll, we'll push down on that coil, and then make that motor turn on. However, you know, in, in motor control land, what we've learned to do is we take a, a one side of the relay, and we'll say it's tied into your plus DC, VDC, and we'll say that's plus VDC, so you know. And through the normally open terminal, we'll do a little tail back through like that. Because then once this is on, this then keeps the power on until, some, until something disconnects it. So usually we will put a, maybe a normally closed stop button right there, okay? And I'll just do a button head right that. So this is how it works in, in, in like the real world type of thing, okay? And then on this side, we'll send this to our motor. Or light, so I'll just do motor, you know back down to negative, assuming that this is a, 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 like a DC motor, you know, a, simple, a small DC motor, okay? You get the idea. Well, that's a lot of wiring, isn't it? And it's kind of com complicated. And, and maybe all I wanna do is control the motor. I don't wanna control the relay, or maybe I do wanna control the relay, but I don't wanna do all this wiring, that's a hard. So let's show you what we are gonna utilize in Allen Bradley PLC land. And, and, and the way to think about this is think about the OR logic that we've talked about. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna add a branch. And now if I add a, 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 another, and remember if we did this or this, let me just put the output right there. Wait, stop and consider what we just did. We said, if this is push or this is true, then turn this on. Or if this is on, turn this on. Logically, we have established that when the push button is on, turn on this, or when this is on, turn on that. So if this is on, this will be on, so it keeps it on at all times. And, that is what we call a seal-in circuit or memory circuit. And if I download this right now, here's the problem. This will always stay on. 
once I push this button, this will not turn off. So the dangers of programming with this is once this is on, you, I would always say either put a bit here or bit here, before or after, it doesn't matter, because if I'm in ladder logic land, this comes beforehand because electric, electricity needs to stop, and technically I should be doing this because I'm a normally closed button. So I'm gonna put on my selector switch, and assume this is a normally closed stop button, just like you would before, because when it's normally closed, power's passing through and the input's on. And so now, if I download this, you'll see all I gotta do is hit this push button for a teeny tiny second and that'll keep the light on. So this allows for a momentary signal to keep the, ex the, the output engaged. So we're online again. I'm gonna flip on my selector switch. So it's simulating a normally closed contact, okay? Hit my push button, I let go, and look, the light is staying on behind me, the yellow light. And if I want to turn that off, I have to see what will, dro what will drop the logic to for that seal, and that's just turning off the selector switch. Please, please, please remember, if you seal on a bit, always have some way to drop it off or turn it off, okay? So have some type of other bit in there to make sure that it, it can turn off. If not, you're never gonna turn it off with your program, okay? So that is how we do a basic seal in. Now, we, if you've done motor controls, you know other things could also come to light. So for instance, Say this is a four, you know, just for, I'm gonna just for the sake of this argument, let's just say this is forward. So say I have a double-sided contactor, you know, something that looks like this here, and a contactor on the other side, and in the um, coil, so right here and right here, it sends a power to that, or no, right here, sorry, up here. Here's the coil, it's, you know, I'm sending a signal here, it sucks it in, when, I, when that output's on, and on the other side, I have another matching coil, okay? And I don't want both of them to be on at the same time because it's a, a you know, it's a, uh, a reversing motor starter. If you run a forward reverse and a, mo a forward reverse at the same time, you got basically two things button up and pulling, and it's not going to work and blow the motor up over time. So what we can utilize is some of this other logic that we talked about. So this is saying when, when this and this or this is true, keep this true. If I don't want anything else on to, to activate this, this is what we tentatively call an interlock. And now look, and now if I put this in here, this is saying when this is true and this is true or this is true, and this is not on, turn this on. And just for the sake of argument, I'm gonna call this reverse. Okay? And I can add another, li another line, a rung, so I'm gonna just copy this and then paste it because it's a little bit easier. And I am going to not, you know, move this here, move this here, and then move that there. Oops, I'll do. Now, if I'm not, if I'm done, well, I'm going to point something out in a second. Well, but let me just download. This won't work right. I'm going to tell you that now. But let's just demonstrate something. So I'm downloading, but you can see basically I'm saying when this, this one is not running, it allows me to actuate the other one. So now here's my logic. Now which light will turn on? That one will. But why can't I turn on my reverse? 
if you are doing a forward and reverse circuit, make sure you either have, you have, you're gonna need at least two different push buttons, okay? Think of it, you'll need a push button per contact or a different switch per contact. Either one that will alternate between forward and reverse or another way to do forward and reverse. So I'll just change this to another uh, push button. And so now watch this. If I hit this push button, the blue light should turn on. Oh, if I hit my selector switch on. So the blue light is on, and no matter how many times I push this push button, it will not turn the forward on until I stop the motor. So this is considered a forward and reverse circuit in, with interlocks. So let me turn that back on, hit the start, and, and you can see both have to be off before I actually uh, could start either one. I have two different push buttons in here. Now I could also, if I say I wanted one push button, excuse me, I could do something like this. See, this is a selector switch. So in the case, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see everything. So in the case, if I want to use that same push button to start the motor, I still need a, a selector switch to say, hey, if it's one way, go forward. If it's the other way, go reverse. So I can still have the same start button, but I need a button to say forward or reverse. Because that way I'll make sure that it's clear. Am I going forward or reverse? So think of this as forward and not forward because not forward would be reverse. All right, so this is my basic, you know, this is your basic, you know, seal in with interlocks. I'm gonna demonstrate one other way to seal in. I don't like doing it this way, but that's with latching bits. I don't recommend this at all. But if, you, if I double click on the OTE command, I can pull this up and you'll see an OTL and an OTU. I can do an output latch. And I can do an output unlatch. So remember before I said you don't wanna do these on consecutive runs, this is the one exception if I'm doing a latch and unlatch or set and reset. Look, I have two different commands. One will unlatch and one will latch. The unlatch will be dominant. So now if I download this, I can still use a momentary signal to keep something on. So if I hit the push button, because this is on, it's saying unlatched. I have to turn off the stop button. Now it's latched on. If I need to stop, it does the same thing. I don't like this only because this could be hidden in the program somewhere, where and, and I won't know what's doing doing what. It's an option. I always like to seal in because then I have all my program on one line, but there are instances where you could use a latch and unlatch. So those are the two ways of making, keeping a momentary signal to keep it on. Um, please let me know if you have any questions and we'll see you in class.